What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. You know, there's definitely dozens and just loads of Hearthstone cards that most players have definitely never heard of. And the developers have made a bunch of like debug or like testing cards that they can only use in their client in order to test different interactions and make sure the game's working properly. And a lot of these developer cards are like play tests and you know, just cards that the developers use to test the game are really cool to look at and there's some others that can also give us a hint about what kinds of cards might exist in the future of Hearthstone. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of these developer cards and talk about the purposes that they serve and what they might mean for Hearthstone moving forward. And also as a quick note before we take a look at these, the art on all of them is the same, of course, that I'm sure you'll notice that. And this art piece shows Edward the Odd, who's a tribute to Hearthstone developer Eric Dodds. Either way though, let's jump right into it with our first one. Minus one durability, and this guy's definitely here to test effects, you know, stuff like Blood Sail Corsair, and just make sure that weapons themselves are working properly. It's probably unlikely that we'll see a spell with this exact effect, although since we haven't gotten a card like Blood Sail Corsair, Swamp Ooze, or Harrison in quite some time, there is a new Karazhan card that actually has this effect, so who knows what Blizzard's gonna do with this type of effect in the future. Next up, we've got 1000 stats. Now this card is pretty darn sweet and is most likely just here to make sure that effects like Blessing of Kings work and that too high of a numbers isn't gonna lag up or crash the client. Obviously, we're probably not gonna see something that actually gives a minion plus 1000, 1000 stats, but maybe we'll see a bigger version of Blessing of Kings at some point in the future. Next up, it's a card called Armor 1, and this one's actually pretty interesting, you know, obviously part of its use is to just test that armor and effects that give armor work, but it's interesting that it can also target the opponent as well. There's not currently any cards in the game that give your opponent armor as a part of something you do, but since this card is here to test that, maybe we'll see a really aggressively costed warrior card that also gives the opponent armor as a drawback, as a card in the future maybe. The next card is Damage All But One, and this one's kind of cool since it's like a really good way to maybe test equality and other effects like that on minions, but it can also be used on heroes to make things like Alex Straza and stuff like that is working correctly. Now obviously this isn't a card that could ever be made for any mana cost since it'd just be way too ridiculous, but it'd be interesting to see how Blizzard explores the design space of setting characters or heroes health to specific numbers. And the next card is Damage Reflector. Now while we can definitely see how this would be a great developer card, since it tests the whenever minion takes damage sort of trigger effect, it also tests a lot of other stuff with like the whirlwind effect, it's pretty cool to think about this maybe being an actual card in Hearthstone in the future. It'd probably have to be like a legendary or at least an epic and cost quite a lot of mana, but this is definitely a really awesome effect and potentially one that we could be really excited to see make it into the game in the future. The next card is Destroy a Mana Crystal. Now this one's actually a very interesting developer card. There's not that many effects that destroy your own mana crystals, there's only a couple like Darnassus, Aspirin, and Felguard, and there's currently no cards that let you destroy the opponent's mana crystals. And this is really interesting because this debug card lets you target a player, implying that we might see some sort of mana crystal destruction for our opponents at some point in the future. Next up we have Destroy Hero Power. Now this card can be used to make sure that things like Finley and Jaraxxus give you back a hero power if you don't currently have one, but that's interesting in and of it of itself since it suggests that Blizzard might have some sort of a destroy a hero power effect in store in the future. It could be a drawback on maybe an amazing minion that makes you destroy your own hero power, or like a super expensive one that maybe destroys the opponents. Either way though, cards like these are always super cool to consider, and it's interesting to maybe design like custom cards based around the effects that these developer cards could potentially bring to the game. Next up we have Hand Swapper Minion. Now this one's pretty interesting when you compare it to a lot of the other debug cards. You know, this one actually has stats and it does look like maybe a little bit of a rough prototype of a card that they plan to develop rather than an actual card that could be used for debugging. Hand Swapper Minion would be awesome to see as an actual card, although it kind of was in the past in the form of the pre-nerf Illidan, but this could be pretty fun to play with, you know, especially because of its synergy with some of the discard based cards in Warlock right now, but with that sort of effect it could potentially be extremely powerful. Next up we've got a little bit of a funny one and it's Placeholder card. Now this card strongly suggests a possible 9 mana 6-8 mage creature that's an epic at some point in the future. 
Can't say for sure exactly what it was or would have done, but who knows, maybe this kind of thing will turn out to be a valid prediction in terms of anticipating future expansions. So we'll have to see how this one turns out, but definitely keep your eye out for any 9 mana 6 8 epics from the mage class. Next up we have Restore All Health. So this one's definitely interesting because apart from Reno or Tree of Life, we don't entirely see the words Restore All Health all that much really. You know, usually healing cards just heal for specific values, so it'd be interesting to see a single target spell that restores all health, although it would definitely have to be pretty absurdly costed. Next up we have Silence Destroy. So while this card can be used to test and make sure that death rattle minions do in fact die to this and that silence as well is working as intended, it also happens to have some card text that people have wanted to see for a really long time. You know, a card that silences and destroys all minions is a board wipe that people have wanted for quite a while now that have, people have been asking for. And while this card is probably just way too good, maybe even at 10 mana, at least we can see that Blizzard has touched on a card like that in some way during development, so maybe we see this kind of effect exist in the future of Hearthstone. Next up we've got the Yogg Saron test. It's kind of funny to see that Yogg Saron was so problematic that they made a zero mana copy of him just to test out his ability, and this is actually the only card that has an exact copy of it in game with the alternative of the debug card. And the next card is Crash, which crashes the game. This is, this is kind of interesting to see. It really shows you a perspective in the fact that the kind of play tests that the developers have to do when they test out new cards or just new stuff for their game. And this card's definitely here to make sure that if someone's game does crash, like if you actually do crash the game, it's not doing anything else that's really bad or maybe having unintended effects like potentially crashing your actual whole computer or like doing some kind of thing messing with the computer files. But the thought of this being an actual card in the game is just absolutely hilarious. Definitely one that we're not going to ever see make it into the game, but it's kind of interesting to see the tools that the developers use to test out their cards. The next card is Do Nothing, and this card does, well, it does nothing. But hey, Gadgets and Auctioneer makes this card almost kind of not really playable, I guess, but eh. I guess you could say it kind of does nothing though. The next card is Free Card. So this is a pretty good one because we could definitely see something like this being a card, you know, maybe like a 10 mana spell for a certain class that had this similar effect. No, they would obviously have to make sure it was balanced in the class that they put it in. Maybe like instead of zero, the cards would cost one or something like that. But the cost of spending all your mana on a single turn just setting up something could potentially make for a really interesting, like super cool risk reward card or just some kind of like, you know, you pay off, make a big sacrifice on this turn and then you get like a nice payoff later on. Could be a pretty interesting kind of thing to mess around with at least. The next card we have is Molasses. Now this card is probably just here to test stuff like roping and various timer sorts of things, but it's also interesting to think about it maybe being an actual card because, well, it would actually be a pretty bad one. You know, giving yourself extra time is never going to be worth an actual card itself because you can just play faster instead, right, with some practice. The only time something like this would ever be playable is if you maybe had some sort of super crazy combo deck that literally needed more time to go off than was possible in a single turn start to finish. Still though, Blizzard would probably never print this because people could just cast this and then go AFK for like 5 hours until the opponent concedes or something ridiculous like that. It'd be totally used for griefing and just super abusable, so this is something that's definitely not going to make it into the game. And the next card is Summon a Random Secret, which of course summons a random secret. So this one's definitely here to test things like Mad Scientist, Mysterious Challenger, pretty much just Mad Scientist's death rattle on a spell, but it would maybe be interesting to see how good this card could work at something around the 1 to 2 or maybe even 3 mana range as just like a spell for a certain class. Either way though, I hope you guys enjoyed this look into some of the developer cards and really just our thoughts and potential future predictions that we were able to make from these. Definitely let us know which one of these developer test cards is your favorite in the comments section below. Either way though, it looks like that's going to be it for me. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.